Hi, my name is Colin Kirkland from Bermad Water Technologies. The purpose of this video demonstration is to describe and to show how to set a Bermad model 75066B dual level float valve. The purpose of this product is to allow water to travel through the valve and for the water to fill into a tank or a reservoir and when the water is flowing through the valve and we hit a high level we want the valve to close then as the level in the reservoir drops to a predetermined level we want the valve to open and it's done by using what we call a four-way number 66 hydraulic four-way pilot which is located inside the top of a tank or in a stilling well outside a tank itself. So before we go through the procedure let's look at the components which we have and understand what we've got here. We have a pressure gauge here which is demonstrating the inlet water pressure and for the purpose of the demonstration we have water flowing from the left to the right hand side. And we're showing here that we've only got a water pressure as low as 4 meters or 40 kPa of pressure. This valve requires very little of any pressure to operate at all. We have an indicating stem on the valve and this is attached to the diaphragm inside so it will be traveling up as the valve is opening and down so you can visually see the valve opening and closing. We have the three-way tap on the valve body itself with a closed, opened and auto port so we can manually close the valve, we can manually open the valve, or we can leave it on automatic and allow the float to make the valve close and open. Now, if we focus a little on the float, the float is located either in the top of a tank or, as I mentioned before, on an external stilling well outside the tank. But the float is basically sensing the level of the water in the tank itself. And the idea is, is that when the level is low, we want the valve to be opened. So we take water pressure from the inlet side of the valve, which travels into our P port or the pressure port. And what it does, it diverts water to the underside of the diaphragm and forces the valve opened. When we have a shaft attached to this mechanism here with a series of stoppers on here, and we can adjust these stoppers up and down to adjust the differential between closing and opening. So as I demonstrate here, if my hands were the water inside the tank itself, the water will raise the float, the float will raise, and when it hits the stopper, the mechanism will turn. And when it turns and hits a high level, the valve will close. I will divert water from the uh, from the pressure port to the top of the bonnet and force the valve closed. The water you can see venting here comes off the bottom of the valve itself. Let's now back and focus on the main valve itself. So the first thing when we're coming to install this valve is you'll notice that the 66 Pilot has this mounting bracket and this has to be mounted in the tank or in the external stilling well using the external back bracket here you'll see that we have four connections to the pilot. We have one at the top called C1. We have C2 at the two o'clock position. Four o'clock position, we have the P port and we have the V vent port on the bottom. So what we have to do is connect these tubes to the valve. And the easiest way to remember this is that the top port, C1, this tube gets connected to the top of the diaphragm of the valve being the top port or in this case into the auto port. C2 gets connected to the lower chamber of the valve and the P port which stands for pressure gets connected to the inlet side of the valve and the V, the vent port, just vents down into the tank itself and that's the water coming off the bottom or the top chamber when the valve is opening or closing. So in relation to the control tubes which you use, the valve is set up to take 3 8 nylon tube or copper tube to run up to the tank itself. 
What is important about those control tubes is that the control tubes are protected. Um, it doesn't generally matter how far away the tank is or the float is from the valve, but the three control tubes that are running up to the actual valve need to be protected by maybe putting them inside a conduit or inside another piece of pipe that's going to protect it. It's also important if the float is situated outside the tank that you, if you're in a frost prone region, that you make sure that you cover it because if the control tubes freeze, then the function of the valve will not operate as designed. So simply either lag the tubes or put them inside a conduit, as I mentioned, and keep them away from the lower temperatures. So once the float has been attached and the tubes are connected, it's now time to commission the valve and to prime the control lines to get rid of all the air out of the control tubes. So the first thing we suggest you do is you open up any inlet isolating valve, a small percentage, to allow some water to come into the valve. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise and lower the float until such time we release all the air out of the control chamber. The reason why we've just partially opened the inlet isolating valve is to ensure that we don't have too high a flow going through and we don't generate water hammer. So what I would suggest you would do is you would have someone situated at the float inside the tank itself and by raising the float what we're now doing is we're applying pressure from the pressure port through to the top chamber and we're releasing any water off the lower chamber of the valve. Once the valve is uh, completely gone to the closed position, which we can see the shaft is almost closed now, the valve is just about closed and we can see the water has now stopped venting off the lower chamber. If we now put the float down, that means we want the valve to open. So the inlet water pressure from the pressure port is now flowing under the diaphragm and the water coming off the top chamber is now venting to atmosphere. So once we've done one complete stroke of the valve, we're now confident that we've released all of the air out of the control lines and the valve is ready to be set. So here we'll see the valve is almost 100% opened and we'll see the water stopping in a second. Here we go. So the next thing now is to set the stopper or the float just below the top water level where you want the valve to close and that will tell the valve where to position. So with a small Allen key you can adjust these stoppers up and down and there's a stopper also on the bottom here that you can adjust and if necessary if you want to alter the differential between closing and opening we have an additional shaft which can connect onto the bottom which will extend the differential between closing and opening so all you have to do is set those stoppers until such time you're at the top water level one of the things which we have to adjust on the float mechanism is the position of the counterweight. Why do we have the counterweight? Because if we have different shafts on the valve, we have a different weight or mass on this side of the float. The float is sand filled to give it an exact mass, but the mechanism changes its weight if we have additional shafts. So what we should do is that we should raise the float to the middle position, undo the lock nut here, and position the counterweight such that when we are in a middle position, the mechanism stays horizontal. And that appears to be a middle position for the float. So we would tighten the mechanism at that point. So we tighten the nut on the top and tighten the lock nut. And that's important to set the counterweight before we start commissioning the valve. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, what we've been doing is utilising the water pressure of 4 metres, which comes from our supply tank situated up on the top here. Now, in many applications, you could have a situation where you have pumps or a network that's supplying water pressure uh, to this valve where the pressure could be zero or just something fractionally above zero. Um, and 
the valve may potentially struggle to operate at virtually no pressure. So one of the great features of the four-way float and the double chambered valve is that instead of taking water pressure from the line, we have the ability to take water pressure from an external source or, and that external source can be water or it could even be air if necessary. So if we had very uh, turbid water or very dirty water, we could actually use an external clean source into the pressure port or instead of using the line pressure here. That will give the valve the ability to operate completely independently of the liquid running through the valve itself. Now there's many other aspects to this valve which are very important um, because one of the unique features of the Bermad 700 series double chambered valve is that as demonstrated here we don't need much water pressure for it to operate but because the valve is double chambered it will close and open at a linear rate and will close and open to avoid water hammer. So if we were on a very large reservoir where the valve, where the reservoir was rising very, very slowly, this valve will not close and open fast. It will close at a very, very slow controlled rate as the reservoir rises and falls. And it'll do it without a surge. If we're filling a very small diameter tank where the level rises and falls very quickly, we may want to be able to control the speed in which the valve closes. And we can do that in several ways. Here we have a needle valve on the inlet side of the valve or a restrictor where we can fine tune the level in which the water fills and leaves the control chamber and that can control the rate of closure and opening of the valve too as well. And that's very simple to add as an option. The other thing that we can do is that we know when a valve closes that most water hammer is generated in the last 20% of closing. If we attach the U-port throttling plug to the lower actuator of the valve, what this will do when the valve is closing, even when it closes at the same controlled um, linear rate, it will slow down the flow in the last 20%. And it's an excellent way of minimizing water hammer if you have high pressure, for example, where it's actually filling the reservoir. Now, one of the other considerations is that if, for example, if you had a dedicated pump that was supplying this uh, uh, valve and you wanted to limit the flow that was running through it, here we're showing the optional indicator stem that visually shows the valve opening and closing. We can remove this and we can fit the mechanical flow stem. Now, what this is a device that fits into the top of the control chamber itself and basically limits the travel of the valve. By limiting the travel of the valve, we limit the flow going through there. So it may be that we have a dedicated pump and we want to limit that flow. Or maybe we're on a large reservoir that when the valve opens, the flow rate's too great and we may be getting scouring of the main and some biofilms coming off. So we may want to alter the flow. And this is a very simple and easy way of adjusting how much the valve opens. And that's called the Bermad mechanical flow stem that can be fitted to the valve at any time. Now, another option which you may want to have uh, inside the valve if you want to limit the flow irregardless of inlet water pressure is to attach a hydraulic pilot that has the function of flow control. And what flow control says is that when the valve is opening at a slow controlled rate, irregardless of inlet water pressure, I will modulate to maintain a constant flow. So that can be added to the bi-level function as well. So it'll open and close at a bi-level and maintain a constant flow rate when we're filling. Another option potentially could be that when the valve is opening, it's dropping the inlet pressure. And if we have users prior to the valve which require water pressure, you can add a pilot which will give you a pressure sustaining function. So the function similar to the flow control that when the valve opens, it will open, but it will ensure that the inlet pressure to the valve is sustained at whatever value we determine it to be. So the valve will open at low level and maintain 25 meters back pressure. That's called pressure sustaining.
Another uh, consideration might be that if you have this valve in a very remote location, and let's say we're using bore water or treated effluent or untreated water where the water quality is very poor, one of the things we may want to do is to put a Bermad LC filter onto the valve instead of the traditional filter. Now it's unusual you would have to use this, but if you want to extend the periods between maintenance and give you greater reliability in very dirty water quality conditions, the Bermad LC filter is an ideal option to replace the standard filter should it be required to as well. So there we have it. That's the Bermad model 750-66B dual level float valve. If you require any more information such as data sheets, instruction manuals, CAD drawings, go to our website at bermad.com.au or if you would like to look at some animations of the valve to get a better understanding of its function, why not go to the Bermad YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.